multiple rumored feuds, a wary brother-in-law, and a possible romance with Prince Andrew? Here's the tea on Princess Diana's relationship with the royal family. If you've seen any episodes of The Crown, you probably think that Princess Diana and Queen Elizabeth II had a pretty frosty relationship. In the series, the Queen seems to be perpetually frustrated by Diana's inability to fit seamlessly into the royal family. However, in reality, Diana and the Queen were likely a little more friendly. Naturally, their relationship went through a few ups and downs, though. At first, Diana was reportedly scared of the Queen. As Diana's biographer, Andrew Morton, wrote, In the early days, Diana was quite simply terrified of her mother-in-law. She kept the formal obsequies dropping a deep curtsy each time they met, but otherwise kept her distance. As time went on, Diana allegedly relied on the Queen more, especially as her marriage to Prince Charles became strained. I've come to the conclusion that really it would have been far easier to have had two wives." While Diana seemed to benefit from her conversations with the Queen, the Queen allegedly found the princess more and more difficult. After Diana and Charles split, the Queen remained one of Diana's only real allies. As Andrew Morton wrote, "...she found one perhaps rather unlikely ally at the palace in the Queen, whose understanding and helpful attitude did much to encourage Diana to soldier on." When it came to Princess Diana's relationship with her father-in-law, Prince Philip, things weren't always easy. At first, Philip allegedly tried to help Diana fit into the royal family, and the pair formed a strong bond. After all, they were both outsiders who had married into the family. In the biography, Prince Philip revealed, Ingrid Seward wrote, "...when Diana found the restrictions of royal life difficult, it was Philip who helped her." Once she was married, she never sat next to her husband. She was always sat next to Philip at the endless black tie dinners, and he took care of her. Apparently, Diana even called him Pa. However, after her marriage started to fall apart, Philip allegedly found Diana more difficult to reason with. While he apparently tried to convince her to remain married to Charles, she had reportedly already made her decision. Philip and Diana exchanged a number of letters, but eventually, their bond disintegrated when they could no longer see eye to eye. According to Seward, Diana came to dislike Prince Philip, as she found him impossible to deal with. He might be entertaining as a dinner guest, but as a father-in-law, he was too judgmental. Princess Margaret, the Queen's younger sister and Prince Charles's aunt, was initially a welcoming presence for Diana. In his book, Elizabeth and Margaret, The Intimate World of the Windsor Sisters, Andrew Morton revealed, Margaret did her bit, too, to make Diana feel at home, taking her to the theater, joining her for social events, taking her shopping, and essentially showing her the ropes. Diana was full of appreciation at her royal guardian angel. Princess Diana even personally revealed to Morton, "...I've always adored Margot. I love her to bits, and she's been wonderful to me from day one." However, by the end of Diana's marriage, Margaret didn't seem to have much sympathy left for the princess. According to Town & Country, Margaret allegedly said to a friend, "...poor Lilibet and Charles have done everything they can to get rid of the wretched girl, but she just won't go." Margaret's change of heart was probably down to Diana's explosive interview with the BBC's Panorama in 1995. According to Tatler, Margaret sent a devastating letter to Diana, and the pair never spoke again. While most of the royal family seemed to do their best to welcome Diana, many of their relationships turned sour when Diana and Charles parted ways. The documentary, When the Spencers Met the Monarchy, suggested that the Queen Mother didn't really trust Diana. Historian Piers Brendan said in the documentary, "...I think the Queen Mother probably saw Diana as another Mrs. Wallace Simpson." somebody who might conceivably pull the monarchy down. It seems the distrust was mutual. As BBC royal correspondent Jeannie Bond added in the documentary, "...I remember Diana told me that she found the Queen Mother intimidating. She was rather wary of her." After Diana and Charles divorced, the Queen Mother allegedly refused to talk about the princess at all. As one former staff member told the Daily Mail, "...she was very much persona non grata, and I never again heard her name mentioned by or in front of the Queen Mum, not even when I saw her a couple of months after Diana's death. 
by which time I had left her employ. Diana's rocky relationship with Prince Charles has been well documented. The pair met in 1977 when Diana was still a teenager, and Charles was dating her older sister Sarah. Charles and Diana reconnected in 1980, and after a quick and fairly formal courtship, the pair announced their engagement. The young Diana was apparently thrilled, but according to experts, she was also unprepared and naive. Royal biographer Penny Jr. said via The Express, She was a romantic and innocent. She knew nothing of life or work or relationships. They tied the knot in July 1981, but there were a number of reasons why Charles and Diana's relationship was doomed. For one, Charles was likely still in love with his ex, Camilla Parker Bowles, whom he later married. And as press attention grew, Diana felt more and more isolated within the royal family. After welcoming their two sons, Prince William and Prince Harry, Diana and Charles announced their separation in December 1992. They finalized their divorce four years later in 1996. Until it became irretrievably broken down. While Diana often gave the impression of being sensitive, soft, and sweet, Anne gave off a very different air. According to reports, their differences meant that the two royals didn't always get along. Apparently, things got off to a rocky start when Diana tried to bond with Anne. Diana reportedly approached Anne with a giant curtsy, who was putting her two children to bed. In the book Prince Edward, A Biography, Ingrid Seward wrote, she looked up at Diana and looked straight through her. Diana, confronted by the searing force of Anne's scorn, fled the room. Even though Anne and Diana weren't best friends, rumors of a feud were probably exaggerated. In a 1985 TV interview, Diana was asked whether there was any rivalry between the pair, to which she replied, per Express, none at all. Princess Anne has been working incredibly hard for the Save the Children Fund, and I'm her biggest fan because what she crams into a day, I could never achieve. However, it would appear that Anne regretted not having a relationship with her sister-in-law. A source told New Idea, Anne's not one for shows of emotion. She's like her mother in that way. But Diana's death really got to her. Deep down, she did regret not making more of an effort with her. We don't know much about Princess Diana's relationship with Prince Andrew. But the pair were reportedly linked before she married his brother Charles. In fact, some people allegedly thought that Diana and Andrew might be a good match. Of the unlikely coupling, royal biographer Ingrid Seward told Us Weekly, I think some of Diana's friends thought that Andrew would be more fun for her than Charles. Because he was very much her age, and he was full of fun and everything else. But Diana wasn't interested in Andrew. It was Charles she was interested in. However, any fondness there may have been between Andrew and Diana seemed to evaporate. In fact, shortly after Diana's death, Andrew allegedly spoke disdainfully of Diana in front of a group. Loose Women star Denise Welch said on the show, He really, really upset me once in the way that he spoke about his late sister-in-law Diana with such disdain. I was horrified by it, as it wasn't really long after she died. One of Princess Diana's closest allies in the royal family was Prince Andrew's wife, Sarah Ferguson. As two women who had married into the family, they had a unique shared understanding, which led to a fierce bond. According to Town & Country, the pair first met as children in school and became close as teenagers. They allegedly became closer after Diana joined the royal family, with Sarah becoming her close confidant. When Sarah and Andrew began dating, Diana was there to help her friend get accustomed to royal life. As Ferguson wrote in her autobiography, My Story, I looked over at my friend in befuddlement. Just keep smiling, Diana whispered. And I did, as I would for long years to come. I always felt safe in mimicking Diana. Sadly, the pair were not on speaking terms when Diana died. As Sarah later confessed to Harper's Bazaar, because we were like siblings, we rode. And the saddest thing, at the end, we hadn't spoken for a year. I love Diana and I will always love her. As for Prince Charles' youngest brother, Prince Edward, it seems that he and Diana weren't exactly close either. According to Ingrid Seward's book, Prince Edward, a biography, Edward has always had a strong passion for maintaining the monarchy's traditions. 
As a result, Diana's modern approach to the royal family reportedly didn't sit well with him. As Seward wrote, Diana began redefining the royal family to reflect her own personality. It grated against his sense of propriety. Seward also claimed that Edward was wary of Diana and that he put more and more distance between them as time went on. It would seem as though Princess Diana wasn't at all close with Prince Edward's wife Sophie, Countess of Wessex. Royal expert Ingrid Seward suggested that Diana may have been a little resentful of Sophie's relatively easy transition into the royal family. Telling New Idea, the Princess of Wales and Duchess of York only discovered how difficult royal life could be after they were engaged and already en route to the altar. Sophie was being given a careful and subtle introduction, a fact which did not escape the notice of Diana and Sarah. One journalist claimed that Diana gave Sophie the not-so-friendly nickname Little Miss Goody Two-Shoes because Sophie won the hearts of the royal family with her low-key approach and her ability to avoid tabloid drama, per The Express. Princess Diana had a loving, doting relationship with her sons, William and Harry. However, each relationship was slightly different. Diana reportedly felt that William had a lot of similarities to Charles, while Harry was more like herself. Diana's former chef, Darren McGrady, told the Daily Mail in 2019, She always used to say, William is deep like his dad and stubborn, and Harry is a hothead like me. He does the first thing that comes into his head. According to royal expert Richard Kay, Diana felt more inclined to give Harry attention because William got a lot of extra attention as an heir to the throne. Kay recalled to the Daily Mail, I have to give Harry extra attention, she would often tell me. Charles and I work so hard to ensure both boys receive equal amounts of our time and love, but others in the family seem to concentrate on William. Once you've accepted that they're gone, then you accept your life is never going to be the same ever again. Although Camilla Parker Bowles wasn't a member of the royal family during Diana's lifetime, as Charles' second wife, she has since become queen consort. It turns out that Diana actually knew Camilla fairly well, too. In fact, the pair were actually friends before Diana discovered that Camilla was having an affair with Charles. According to Andrew Morton's Diana, Her True Story, the pair had lunch shortly after Diana became engaged to Charles, something which was recreated by the Crown. They apparently spent their time laughing and gossiping. However, when Diana found out that Charles and Camilla were potentially more than friends, she understandably became jealous, and her friendship with Camilla came to an end per Tatler.